In today's episode, we had Jose Luis Morales on. He's an investor and realtor out of Ventura, California, and he's doing some really big things. He's got over 56 doors in California where it's really expensive. On top of that, he's running a big realtor business where they're doing over a million dollars a year in commissions for the past many years straight. He's got a big three-year vision goal to have over a million dollars in passive income every year as well. Big thinker, just like me. We had a really good time going over all of his goals and some big plans he has for social media this year. You're not gonna wanna miss it, so make sure you tune in for the whole video. Now, let's jump into it. Welcome to The Ryan Pineda Show. Where our mission is to invest. I only expect to make money in things that I understand. Innovate. It's about believing in the future and thinking that the future will be better than the past. And inspire. I am much more likely to hit my goal just due to putting it out there. Now rocking with the best. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Ryan Pineda Show. Today, I have a really good friend and investor out of California. He's a realtor who is killing it. He is doing a lot of big things in apartments, on the investing side. And in fact, he actually played baseball with one of my former teammates in college, which is cool. We'll talk about that later. But I have the one and only Jose Luis Morales. How you doing, man? Doing good, man. Did I say it right? Because I feel like that was kind of like the uh, American way to say it. Yeah. You said it as best as possible. As, as best as I can. <laughs> Tell me the right way to say it. Jose Luis Morales. There we go, baby. I love it. <laughs> so another funny thing I forgot to mention in that intro is that we're both matadors. Yeah. We both graduated from Cal State Northridge. Mm-hmm. Shout out to uh, CSUN. Yeah. So not many people. Actually, a lot of once you like hang out in SoCal, you see like a lot of people went there. Big time. Yeah. Why do so many people do that? I probably say like it's got a good, I, I went there because it had a good business program to be honest, but I don't, I don't know why the, the rest of the people. Yeah. Cause go. I went there for baseball and I uh-huh. didn't know what Northridge was. I, I thought it was up North somewhere. Mm-hmm. And cause I'm from Vegas, but then, you know, you, you go to SoCal and everybody's like, Oh yeah. Northridge. Like, yeah, I know somebody that went there and my sister went there. It's huge. For us, it was like the closest proximity. Just, uh, it was 45 minutes away, had really good business program. I was like, man, yeah. like, yeah. Do you think uh, the business program has helped you get to where you're at today? Big time. Huh. 100%, man. I wasn't expecting that. Every time I talk about college, I'm always like, yeah, it's whatever. Like, I got my econ degree from uh-huh. Northridge, which I guess makes sense because I do a lot of econ now, mm-hmm. but um. I don't know. I feel like I've learned everything from actually being in business. Big, I, yeah. You feel the same? I'll, I'll tell you where it helped me. So the best thing that happened to me is my dad had a business at the same time I was going to business school and I actually worked there. So I'd go to school when I learned about uh, having a business strategy. I'd go back to my dad's business and I would implement it. I'd go back to school. They teach me about researching your competition and kind of building a strategy around that. And my dad would let me implement it. I'd go learn about marketing and my dad would let me implement it. So I basically got the best of both worlds because I was learning the concepts, but I actually went back and applied them. And my dad gave me the liberty to apply them at that time. So it was back in 2008, 2009 when the market was crashing and my dad's business actually went up instead of going down just because of everything that I was learning in in business school, which is awesome. That's crazy. So yeah, you were going to school while all that went down. Yeah. You're, you were there a couple of years before me, mm-hmm. which is crazy. Um, you know, we were talking a little bit before this and you're just telling me a little bit about what you're doing. And I want to share some of that with everybody. Um, you know, you have 56 doors right now. Correct. All in California, right? Yeah. Those are expensive doors, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you've been a realtor for how many years now? Uh, 10 years. 10 years now. Yeah, 10 years. Been doing over a million a year in commissions for many, many years. Yeah. Um, And you're trying to buy more rentals, mm-hmm. get that depreciation. We're talking about that. Yeah. And you're just kind of in this phase now where you kind of hit the realization that like I hit last year mm-hmm. with social media, you're starting to take it pretty serious. Yeah, I'm starting to definitely see the value in it. Yeah. Um, so before we get into that, um. Why don't you just give us a little background of like, you know, how you got to this point. Tell us a little bit about your story, man. Yeah. So as you mentioned, I, I went to Cal State Northridge, uh, got a business degree. Uh, I was fortunate enough that I worked at my dad's business and 
obviously he allowed me to implement everything there. Uh, then within a year of uh, graduating, I, I got my real estate license, uh, started selling real estate, uh, started off as a buyer's agent then transitioned to a listing agent. Now I have a small team that sells uh, over 120 properties uh, a year and uh, started investing as well too from the beginning. Um, I was a average student, uh, 2.0 in high school, uh, that improved in college, but why, why do you think it was, and I'm going to say that's bad, right? Like, why was it so bad compared to college? Like, how did you get better? I would say it was focus. It, it was just in high school. My focus was elsewhere. Like, uh, I girls, was girls, <laughs> uh, a little bit of, uh, other activities yeah. that, uh, I'm not proud of, but yeah, essentially, yeah. So just hanging out, having a good time. But you were good enough to get in Northridge still. So I actually uh, didn't go straight there. I, I went to community college first, and that's when I got my stuff together. Um, okay. I basically uh, made a decision. I, I said to myself, I'm not going to go pro in baseball. I love it, but it's probably time for me to get my right stuff together. And uh, ended up uh, going there for two years, then transition out to Northridge right after that. That's crazy. And that, that kind of brings up to uh, what I was saying earlier with uh, my former teammate. So mm -hmm. I, I got to Northridge two years after you, mm -hmm. and that was where I met Edwin Chiarte, mm -hmm. who's uh, you went to high school with. Yeah, yeah. And then him and I met at Northridge, played together, and really good dude. We both got drafted. Um, he played for a long time. He's He played in Mexico for a long time, too. Yeah, yeah. So... I Long career. Down in Tijuana, I think. I know. Yeah. yeah. That, they have a baseball team out there. Dude, people wouldn't, you know, you are you said your parents immigrated from Mexico, yeah. right? Uh -huh. So people don't know this, but those Mexican leagues, you can make a lot of money, dude. Really? Yeah. Like, I mean, there are dudes that make 10, 20 grand a month playing baseball in Mexico. Wow. I didn't know that. No. And you're like a celebrity, especially if you're Mexican like mm -hmm. Edwin. So, yeah, that, that's funny that, uh, you know, when you walked in here today, you're like, I was like, yeah, you know, I went there. And you're like, yeah, I went there. I was like, oh, cool. It's not every day. You meet somebody. Uh, a matador. Yeah, fellow alum, man. <laughs> so you, you you got out of college from Northridge. You uh -huh. went straight to real estate. Yeah. Okay. List or started as a buyer's agent. Mm -hmm. Every buyer's agent dream is to become a listing agent. <laughs> Big time, yeah. Huh? <laughs> and then you built out a team. Uh -huh. And how long has it been kind of going like this? Uh, like at as this team, current level, I'd probably say f like the last four years, I've kind of hit a plateau where we've been selling anywhere from like a hundred homes to one twenty, one thirty, essentially for the last four or five years, basically. Do you think it's just like you don't want to do more than that, or it's just you know it's 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 really hard to break the plateau? What do you think it is? I, I think it's ha it's a couple things. One was is having access to the right information. You know, like getting certain people in your life that can mentor you to basically take your business to a different level. So um, if uh, I basically have continued to do the same things over and over and expecting like a different result. So um, I would say that I'm, I'm at a point now where I've started really investing in the business. I've started hiring a lot more people. Obviously, we're doing a lot more stuff with social now. And I would say that it's uh getting different, getting access to different information that basically will allow you to get a breakthrough in your career. But when you say information, like, tell me a little bit about that. What are you talking about? So I'll, I'll give you an example. Like when I started real estate, I went the first six months without selling any property. Um, and I had somebody approach me and he said, I will mentor you and I will teach you everything that I know, but I will take 50% of your commission um, essentially on top of whatever your broker split is. And at first when you approached me, I said, I don't need that, man. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm good. I'll figure this thing out. But then I went six months without closing a single deal. Right. Approached me again at the six months and he said, Hey, look, I can help you. You've got talent. I mean, you can succeed in this business. You've got the work ethic. Uh, six months later, the next six months, nine deals, then 18 deals, then 30 deals. So essentially uh, I remember uh, doing a walkthrough of a property with him and a husband and a wife. And the husband kept saying he wanted to purchase a home at a 500,000. And he decides to show them a $600,000 home. And he 
basically told me, look, watch the wife's body language. Take a look at like, as soon as she's walking into the $500,000 home, she's walking right out. She doesn't like them. Look, I'm going to show her a $600,000 property um, and then watch the body language. Literally, we walk in and the wife was just like, kept looking up, <laughs> chilled at the kitchen for like 10, 15 minutes. He's like, they're going to buy that home. I'm like, no way. The guy <laughs> only wants to spend $500,000. Like, they're going to buy that home. Sure enough, the people bought that home. So essentially what, what I mean by having a mentor is that a good mentor who's been through what you're going through can tell you, hey, look, if you continue going down this path, there's going to be a stop sign on the right-hand side. Stop there. There's going to be a lion on your left-hand side 10 feet later. So basically just watch out for the lion. And they can basically guide you to get to where you want to go a lot faster. So I, I'd say access to information in regards to marketing, uh, uh, human behavior, um, um, uh, scripts, taxes, just a lot of different things. Yeah, just the tactics and everything that they do for sure. Yeah. And it's funny, man, because the thing is so much information, you know, that's why I was curious what you define information mm -hmm. as. Like YouTube, this podcast, mm -hmm. like information is so freely available. Yeah. But the one thing I'll say with information is it's hard to know who's got the right one. Agreed. Because everybody portrays himself as the expert, mm -hmm. right? And very few people are actually out there doing it, yeah. making it happen, you know? So I've always said it like this. If you really want to learn from somebody, um, most likely somebody who's at a high level, you're not going to end up getting that information for free. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, just right now, this very moment, you can watch this podcast, but to learn what I know behind the scenes and get it, yeah. you know, for your exact situation... You know, you got to do exactly what you actually did. Yeah. You know, you, you came to my office for a day to learn social media. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't even have like a product for this. Yeah. It was just like, look, I want to learn social media. I want to spend a day, you know, watching you film and all that. Like how much? And then it was just like, all right, you know, done deal. And a total win-win for everybody. And by the way, guys, if, if you're interested in something like that, um, you can email me at Ryan at Ryan Pineda and we can talk about something like that as well. I don't even advertise it, but a few of you guys have been asking me, but regardless of that, um, you suck or you sought out mm -hmm. the person who had the information that you wanted. Yep. You said, Hey, I want to get better at social media. What's it going to cost? Mm -hmm. And like your first mentor said, here's the cost 50, 50. Yeah. You know, I, you don't owe me anything up front, but I want 50, 50. Yeah. Or, you just go pay someone up front and then, you know, there's no split. Mm -hmm. Like that's kind of just how it goes in today's world to get access to like, I would call the premium information or the relationships, yeah. you know? Yeah. So what do you think? Like with that guy, how long did you kind of have that arrangement for? I'd probably say like two to three years, but then I reached another plateau. So essentially I got to the point where I was selling as many homes as he was and he had never been to the next level. What I mean by that, he is he had never sold 50 or 100 properties a year or 70 properties a year. Right. And he was mainly a buyer's agent. So essentially, my next mentor, shout out to a guy named Aaron Novello, um, he basically taught me the listing side of the business and basically um, took me from the 30 deals, mostly buyers, to 65 to 80 deals, all sellers. Like mm. every single one of them seller, like one buyer sale, maybe in the last three years or so. So I basically found people that were already doing what I wanted to do. And they basically gave me a, sh a roadmap and a shortcut, which is the same thing I I, I did over here. And yeah. to be honest, I, I had never taken social media seriously. And uh, I'm so glad that I came today because everything that I've learned, I'm just like, man, this is <laughs> the shortcut to getting to where I want to go a lot faster. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for that, man. That's yeah, man. I'm, I'm, I'm extremely, glad you reached out. Extremely grateful for that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny, man, because with everything in life, there's no doubt you could figure things out on your own. It's just a matter mm -hmm. of time, right? How much time are you going to put into it? How long is it going to take all that? Like for me at this point in my life, I literally trying to shortcut everything. Yeah. You know, if I can shortcut it by paying more or you know, getting the blueprint, like, dude, I'm doing it all day. Cause I just realized now that <laughs> maybe because I'm getting older, mm -hmm. I'm like, dude, you know, time is limited. 
especially sure. with running multiple businesses and mm-hmm. I don't have time to be like making the wrong move. Yeah. So um, I think you're, you're absolutely spot on. Like however you can find the shortcut, do it. Not only that, but if you're a business owner and you've got a profitable company, essentially this is all write-offs, you know? Mm-hmm. So essentially what I mean by that is would you rather pay 50% to the government or would you rather reinvest back in the business maybe take a a, a a a shortcoming now but invest for future growth and this is kind of the way i'm looking at it i'm like reinvesting back into the business for the for the future yeah growth, absolutely essentially. That, that's how i look at it for all this camera equipment mm-hmm. for everything we got you know it's like i would have paid tax on yeah that expense but now i get a tax break big time and a huge future potential you know mm-hmm. profit so speaking of taxes, you know, let's talk about your 56 stores and the real reason you're buying 56 stores. I have a feeling it's not necessarily the cash flow like everyone thinks. No. So when I got started investing into real estate, that's all I would look at. I would look at the cash flow. I'd be like, all right, how much am I investing? How much am I getting back out in cash flow? Now it's, it, it's uh, depreciation. So I'll give you an example. I I bought a 25 unit building in 2019 and basically I got a million dollar write off on that building. Crazy. I couldn't believe it. I literally emailed my accountant two or three times and I told him, are you sure this is legal? Are you, I told him, are you sure it's illegal? Are you sure that this is right? So let me, and I told him, let me get this straight. So you're saying that by owning this building that wipes out all of the gains for my real estate business and you're saying that I don't have to pay any federal taxes. And he said, he looked at me and he said, yeah, I was like, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I knew that there was something out there. And that's, that's what I'm talking about. Having access to the right information, getting connected to the right people, reading the right books. Um, but yeah, now, now I look at the return on investment, but I also look at the depreciation that I'm getting from the asset, uh, to see if I can minimize my tax liability and pay less taxes so that I can continue to reinvest back into the business or continue to reinvest back into, into, into real estate. Right. Yeah. You know, I'm in, I'm actually in the process of creating a rental property course Mm -hmm. and you know, one of the segments is tax and like ROI. And so people don't realize there's so many ways to calculate ROI when it comes to rentals, like the basic level, like you just said, is people are looking at the cash flow. Yeah. Hey, how much am I making every month? Okay, I'm making a couple hundred bucks. This is cool. But then you take it a step further and you're like, well, what's your cash on cash return, right? Because mm-hmm. if you do a burr, like you said, yeah. it's infinite. Like you, mm-hmm. whatever you make is pure profit on your cash. You got all of it back. Um, but another way to look at it too is like, I, I just call it like the real return. I don't know the technical name, but it's like, how much are you actually making when you count all the tax savings and yeah. the depreciation, all that too? Because like you just said, if you wrote off a million dollars, that would have been in California freaking, <laughs> that had taken more than half of it. Yeah, You're talking about, it just saved you 500 G's. In taxes. In taxes. Which is unbelievable. Just because you can do so much with that. Right. It's- even if you were breaking even on cash flow, yeah. but you saved 500,000, the return is crazy. The other thing I didn't pay attention to was the principal pay down. Like when I started buying properties, I was just like, okay, how much positive cash flow am I making and how much am I investing? But I didn't realize that the principal gets paid down as well too. And then you get the depreciation as well too. And then you get to write off the interest. So there's so much more than just um, the cash flow that the asset produces. And that's access, that's information that I didn't know about. And that's information that we guide our clients as well, too. We basically now, whenever we approach clients, we guide them. Okay, look, don't look just at that. Look at this and look at that. Right. Yeah. I mean, you get the interest deductions, you get depreciation, you get principal pay down, you get appreciation. Like, you know, me as a flipper, which is what I've done my whole career, Mm -hmm. it's great. Like I'm, that's how I make my income. Just like you make your income as a realtor. Like you Mm got to have some type of active income. Yeah. But when you realize what rental properties can do and prevent you from paying so much in tax, plus build your long-term wealth and net worth, like Mm -hmm. you start to realize like, man, I need to keep some of these houses. Yeah. I always started off keeping them at the beginning. The only difference was that I would put 20% down 
the information that I had was from my father. He would put 20% down, they would cash flow, and then he'd hold on to them for a really long time. But then that would leave me cash for poor for my business, which means I couldn't reinvest back into the business because I was always putting the 20, 25% down instead of maybe something like a, like a, like a burr strategy where you get your money right back out uh, within a three to six month period. And you can continue making money with the same uh, money essentially, instead of having it tied up yeah. for an extended period of time. One thing that I always like to look at, um, and people don't really do this, is the velocity of money. Like, yeah. do you want to keep your money moving constantly? Mm -hmm. I never want to invest in something where my money just sits there yeah. and it's done. Because I know I have multiple things I can do. I can put it into my business where I know that if I run my business properly, I have full control of, mm -hmm. I can get a far better return investing 50K into my business versus 50K in the stock market, Yeah, whatever, right? The reason a lot of people invest in the stock market is because they don't have a business. They're a normal, you know, W-2 employee. Like they have no other opportunity. It's like, all right, we got to put in the stock market. Yeah. But when you're in the real estate game, we come across deals all the time. Big like time. Yeah. if I can put the money towards that deal and then get it back out because I got such a good deal and go buy another deal and another deal, mm -hmm. like it's just a no brainer. And so it's cool to see that, you know, you kind of went from that old school mindset of, yeah. hey, 20% down, let's maximize cash flow to, hey, you know what? A little less cash flow is fine because I'm going to yeah. go buy another deal. It served its purpose, but I would have done a lot more damage back in the day had I known this information. I would have done a lot. I would have my real estate portfolio would probably be upwards of 150 units <laughs> had, I, had I taken a different approach. I, I don't regret anything, but I'm so glad that I know it now just because you continue using the same money, turning it over, and uh, you're just – using it the same money it's just getting reused multiple times yeah. essentially and that's you know the velocity of money just keep mm -hmm. turning it over over and over again so mm -hmm. i love that man um before we jump into the next section um of social media and kind of why you came here today mm -hmm. uh let's hear a quick word from our sponsor many people want to talk about how much money they make but what's more important is how much money they keep that's where my company, TrueBook CPA, comes in. We help real estate investors and business owners across the country with all types of tax and accounting services. This includes bookkeeping, tax planning, tax preparation, and CFO consulting. I can tell you, my businesses have exploded since I started taking my accounting seriously. And if you want to do the same, you can go book a free call at TrueBooksCPA.com. Once again, that's TrueBooksCPA.com. One of the hardest parts about real estate investing is finding a good contractor. That's where Southwestern Custom Construction comes in. They've been doing remodels in Nevada and Arizona since 2006. As a fully licensed and bonded general contractor, they're able to help with any type of renovation, all the way from an entry-level fixer-upper to a custom luxury home. Southwestern Custom Construction specializes in working with investors. I've personally used them on many of my projects, so I know their team is legit. If you want to get a bid on a project, head over to customhomenow.com. Once again, that's customhomenow.com. One of the best ways to get off-market real estate deals is through cold calling. And if you want to reach as many people as fast as possible, then you need Batch Dialer. With their predictive dialing technology and built-in CRM, Batch Dialer is one of the top dialers in the industry. You can switch between single or multi-line dialing, as well as do voicemail drops and call recordings. And for being a listener of The Ryan Pineda Show, you'll get a seven day free trial. Just go to batchdialer.com slash Ryan. Once again, that's batchdialer.com slash Ryan. Now back to the show. All right, so the reason you came here, even though I would love to think you, you came to learn all my real estate investing knowledge and all that stuff, um, was to learn about social media, man. So, yeah. you know, we, we spent a few hours at the office. What do you think you've picked up so far for the audience? Um, I, I, probably say that um, just uh, the power of it, to be honest. I somewhat already knew how much of an impact it can make on all your businesses, but I think just seeing it is, uh, it uh, it makes it more real. Um, for me, I, 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 I've taken courses on social media, but 
uh, one of the things that helps me out sometimes is watching how people produce their content. And that was the big thing that I've, I've gone from you, how just, uh, it's not that complicated. I don't think, I think it's just a matter of being consistent with it, always adding value and just doing it over and, and over. But yeah, no, I mean, it's been great. Um, essentially just, uh, obviously watching you do what you're naturally gifted at. Yeah. And I would say too, I think there's obviously natural talent involved with anything you do, whether you're a sales guy, whether you're an influencer, baseball player, as we said, you know, like there's always natural talent, but a lot of times when people see talent, like they're seeing like the end picture of it, you know, they don't see what it was like five years ago, eight years ago, whatever. And you know, what I'll say is for me anyways, and you, and you'll relate to this since you played baseball, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, the best guys make it look so easy, right? You Mm -hmm. saw, like, the best players. Like, when they make an amazing play, you're like, wow, that was, like, he made that look like it was nothing. Mm -hmm. But we know as players, we're like, dude, that was, I can't believe he did that. But, and you know what's funny is, like, when a fan sees it, they think they can do it, too. They're like, (laughs) yeah, I could, you can't feel that ball? I can feel that ball. Like, so it's kind of like a gift and a curse when you become good at something because, people think it's way easier than it Uh really is. And it's like, yeah, it just takes like thousands and thousands of reps to get there. Um, But also too, like for me anyways, you know, you watched me film a couple of videos Mm -hmm. and saw how we we go about the process and everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're currently filming this podcast right now. You can see just, you know, everything. And it's it's something that I try and strive to make as simple as possible Mm -hmm. because – you know, we we're talking about time and shortcuts, right? Like we only have so many hours in the day. Yeah. And so if I want to put out as much content as humanly possible, I got to be super efficient mm-hmm. with everything. Yeah. I got to make sure I film it the right way as fast as possible. We need to make sure that our equipment's set up so we're not having all this lag time in between sets. Mm-hmm. Got to have scripts ready. Um, and then figure out too, what fits my persona the best? Yeah. And so like you were looking over my scripts Mm -hmm. and for me, I like, I use bullet points Mm -hmm. and I know that there are people who can't do that. Like they need a teleprompter. They need the literal, literally word by word, word by word. I can't do it. We've tried it. My team will tell you, I tried to script it out. It was a mess. It took me like an hour to write it. And then I'd be like going off of the script because I'm like, oh, well, I want to say this. And it just screws up the teleprompter. So yeah, long story short, I wasted like 300 bucks on a teleprompter <laughs> that we never used. But um, I think you just got to figure out like what works best for you. Mm-hmm. And you're going to you're gonna figure that out as you go along. Like, hey, how can I efficiently make the best content, you know, in as much volume as possible? Because that's what I think the name of the game is. Yeah. It's volume. Well, for me, one of the things that's been amazing is I started focusing on it like two, three months ago. <laughs> and... I mean, it, I've got like 300 of hour, 310 hours of watch time in a month, which averages out to about 11 hours a day. And to me, that's amazing to me that other people can be watching my content for 11 hours in a day while I'm doing something else. Isn't that crazy to, like, to think about? Yeah, like literally people are on their screen or on their TV watching you. For I mean, for you, it's a <laughs> lot more than that. But I, I feel like I'm at at the early stages. And to me, just knowing that people are watching that for that amount of time is mind-blowing to me. Crazy. Yeah, I'll tell you that just the first couple of times that I started posting and seeing that too, like, you know, to get monetized on YouTube, you need 4,000 hours mm-hmm. of watch time. And I just remember it took me like three months to get that 4,000 hours. But, you know, when I hit it, I was like, man, this is amazing. Yeah. And then you think about it and you're like, People watched you for 4,000 hours. That's crazy. Un- while, while you were doing something else. Right. Meaning like you weren't even there explaining anything to them. Like you're doing something completely different, which is amazing to me. Yeah, it's crazy, man. So tell me what your plans are with social media. So I, I uh, plan on getting into TikTok. Um, obviously, we're looking to grow the YouTube channel. Uh, we've got a podcast that we're... <laughs> Uh, doing and essentially i'm just uh looking to to get a million subscribers that's i would say that's the the that's the the grand goal goal. uh on youtube 
What's the uh, time frame? <laughs> it's a good question. Um, I haven't set that to be honest. Maybe you can help me with that, but um, I, I haven't set the, the the time frame of doing it, which I know is is important. Um, the main thing though is I, I I feel like I have this higher purpose in life, and I feel like my higher purpose in life is to help people and to educate people and and give them access to the right information um, as it relates to um, real estate or some of the other things that I do. I just feel like a lot of people want to do things, but they just don't have access to the right information. Hence, they don't do anything. Or if they do do something, they get themselves into like a bad investment or uh, just a, a bad deal. Um, so I feel like um, that's the ultimate goal to provide value to, to people. But obviously, um, the big, hairy, audacious goal would be to get to a million subs you know, on YouTube. And one thing I'll say about that is that's what's so great about social media. I was saying this on a recent podcast that like you can get the best of all worlds. Mm -hmm. You know, you can help a ton of people. Mm -hmm. Your message can be heard to millions mm -hmm. and you can make a lot of money doing it. Like what, yeah. what else could you possibly ask for in a career? Like just being able to help people and make a lot of money doing it. Because, you know, when, when I think about house flipping, like it's great. I, I see the value of, of helping mm -hmm. people and my employees and stuff. But yeah. at the end of the day, am I like helping people on a huge level? Mm -hmm. Probably not the act of flipping a house. It's not like yeah. crazy help. Now mm -hmm. what I do with the profit, sure. I can go yeah. help a lot of people, but with social media, the act of social media, if you do it right, mm -hmm. helps a lot of people. Big time. Yeah, I've already started to get people reaching out to me like, oh my God, thank you so much for making that video. That video helped me out tremendously. And what I'm doing is like so much on a smaller scale than what you're doing. So I could only imagine what type of messages you get from people and and people reaching out to you. But it feels good. It feels really good to be able to 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 have people saying like, hey, look, you changed my life or I didn't know that or thanks to you, I'm doing this or thanks to you. I'm doing that. So for me, it's, it's, I've made tons of money selling real estate. I, I've bought $12 million that I own worth of real estate. It's not necessarily, um, I'm not chasing that anymore. I'm, I'm chasing more of the purpose um, yeah. as well too, knowing as well too, that, that the social helps out every aspect as well too. So it, it essentially, uh, gets me to the point where I can help a lot more people um, get to where they want to be. Yeah. No, I totally agree. I mean, I I made that switch last year too where I was like, man, I mean, I flip 100 houses a yeah. year. Like what, do I want to flip two? Like what's it going <laughs> to, what's it going to do? You know, yeah. it, it's not going to really improve the quality of my life. Mm -hmm. Like it just makes more money. But I get excited about doing new things and mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. things. And so- that's why I'm so passionate about the social media and I've poured everything into it the last year. And it's awesome to see the results now and the impact. So like, I would just encourage you, you know, since you're just now, you know, finally taking it seriously. I, I see so many parallels to what I was doing a year ago. Yeah. A lot of parallels. And then, you know, I, I just hope that, uh, hopefully I can speed up your path. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And that's why I was here. I was here because obviously I feel that you have that you, you're the information that I'm looking for. What inspired me about you was how fast you were able to grow. Like, I don't think I know that many people that have grown as fast as you have in the niche that you're in. Um, so essentially I, I, I wanted to be connected with you. I'm hoping that I could uh, add enough value. Uh, mm -hmm. to keep you in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. I love it. We we had a we had a conversation off camera for everyone knowing. Like um you know, we were talking about the the value of collabs and stuff. Uh -huh. And um you know, he's like what what should we do about collabs? Like how do you go about it and all this? Yeah. And I go, "Well, I'll tell you the one way not to go about it. It's definitely don't just ask people for collabs." Mm -hmm. Like I I see even me people ask me all the time like, "Can we do a collab? Can we do a video?" blah blah blah. Like you always want to lead with value in yeah. everything you do. And I found that to be true for even guys who are like way above me. They mm -hmm. still act that way. They're like always leading with value mm -hmm. in everything. Mm -hmm. And it just, 
it just always comes back that way and people want to work with you. And like, I mean, I can tell you understand that. Um, so I don't think you have a problem with that. It's yeah. just, it's, I, I just want people on the listening to know, like if there is somebody you're trying to reach, find a way to like add value to them. Mm-hmm. Cause, uh, you'll, you'll get their attention. There's something that they need. Like you just have yeah. to figure out what it is. Yeah. And I, I agree with you. I think that the way to grow in life is to add more value than what you're being currently compensated for. I mean, it goes for my employees as well too. Like if, if they want a, a pay raise, uh, essentially it's just, if you add more value, uh, it's a no brainer. You know, a lot of people, I think one of the mistakes that a lot of people do is they ask instead of ask, instead of adding more value. So they're more concerned about them than they are about the other person. And essentially, uh, because of that, it limits their growth because they're not focused on helping the other individual. I think it's those people that are always focused on adding value to people are the people that you see the exponential growth that you've had, you know, because you're focused on the on the on the value. Yeah, it's funny, man. Um, I'm not going to name names, Mm -hmm. but I'm going to I'm going to give an example of how not to do it. Um, Almost every single person I work with has that same approach, whether they're business guys that no one's ever heard of or whether they're very famous people, um, you know, who they they just all have that approach. And, you know, I had these two guys approach me that, um, you know, have a big following, Mm -hmm. but, you know, probably not real following. Right. And basically they, they were just trying to get me to work with them. And they're like, look at my profile. You know, I got, I got this guy and this guy. I know this guy, blah, blah, blah. Oh, you like that? Like, I know that guy. He's like, you know, if we work together, you know, I'll, I'll make you an introduction to that guy. And I'm like, why don't you just make me an introduction to him now? Like, instead of saying, yeah. if we do this. Yeah. You know? I'm like, that's not leading with value. That's the opposite. Like, mm-hmm. make the introduction. And, you know, if it works out, am I going to want to work with you? Absolutely. Like, You've proven value, but this whole if and then thing, it's like, dude, that's not value. That's like a transaction that's, you know, whatever. And so, yes, it was just funny because I'm like, yeah, that's definitely not uh, what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. I I think if you do that, I'm I'm a believer in what goes around comes around. So I think if you do enough of that, just good things uh, will continue happening. Um, I, I would say that's how I've gone to where I am in my real estate career in my life that I just always focused on um, providing more value in advance without expecting anything in return. And a lot of times I've been blessed that uh, things have come back around. But I think giving without expecting as well, too, yeah, I think is uh, big. Well, and it's hard for most people, especially like if you're going to give up something mm-hmm. and knowing like, Oh man, like if if I give this up, there goes everything I have to give, and yeah. I just gotta hope that this person returns the favor, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And like you said, it, it just somehow always does, and it may not be right away; it may be years down the road. But mm-hmm. I have just found when you help people, it, it just comes back, and it may not even come back from that person, right? Yeah. It might come back from somebody else that mm-hmm. saw what you did or whatever. So. Total believer in that, man. Yeah. Um, so tell me a little bit about where it stands now. I know you got a podcast. Mm-hmm. Tell us tell us about the podcast. What's it called? What are you guys talking about? Uh, so it's Jose Luis Morales, uh, Real Estate Education, just my name. Um, and just basically the topic that we're focused on is real estate education. Uh, I've got 533 subscribers. And every time- We're going to hit four digits, baby. That would be awesome. Every time I get a subscriber, it's more exciting than anything else, to be honest. Anytime I get a subscriber or anytime I see the watch time spike, I it's just uh, something obviously new. Um, and I get more excited than obviously selling a house. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting because it's watching it grow, watching if you actually put energy into it and you get the right information. I've taken several courses now on it. Um, it's- uh, it's growing. Uh, but yeah, we, we talk about, uh, some of the boring stuff. We talk about like, uh, we ha- have a video, like how to evict a tenant in California. Cause that's a big problem. A, a lot of our clients are facing that right now. We talk about like escrow process. We talk about, um, uh, how to get your second home, like 
we interview. So basically we interview other professionals like escrow officers, attorneys, um, real estate investors. Um, we interview um, title title reps. They basically do very in-depth topics like uh, uh, like like on title issues or, or, or what is title? What is mortgage insurance? Right. Um, Most people have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're, uh, to be honest, it, it started with a vision to be able to, whenever I'm co having a conversation with a client and he asked me about a 1031 exchange to be able to say, Hey, great. Look, this is what it is. I've got this great interview where I interviewed a 1031 exchange specialist. I've asked them everything as to what a 1031 exchange, what the timelines are, what a reverse 1031 exchange. And then I'll send them that video. And then by watching that video, they've got, I would say, probably as good of an understanding as to what a 1031 exchange is as anybody would without knowing anything about real estate. So that's how it started. But obviously it's evolving now. So we're doing stories as to how I purchased an apartment complex with $150,000 down, how I made 600 k on a property. So just different. Uh, it's evolving into other areas. But uh, it started off just with uh, interviewing different professionals that are experts in that niche, basically. Yeah. So we'll we'll link to his um, show down below. So make sure you guys go subscribe. But tell me about this uh, these deals, man. People, everybody <laughs> knows I'm a deal junkie. Like I just when I hear about deals, I gotta I gotta know the details, man. Tell me, give give me a little taste. What what does that 600k look like? The, the first property that I ever bought for the 600 or the 600 K in profit. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, it's, it's basically the, I bought at the bottom of the market and basically the property has appreciated since then. So it was a long-term hold. It yeah. wasn't like I made 600 K in a year or two years. It was actually the first property that I ever bought. 20% um, down. No. So I actually bought my first property at FHA okay. three and a half owner percent down. Yeah. yeah. Owner occupant. Um, I put uh, $8,000 down. It was a short sale. The owner paid for all the closing costs. How much did you buy it for back then? Uh, $250,000. This was what year? Uh, this was uh, 2010. Nice. October 2010. Um, I ended up uh, selling that property, though, eventually, um, and did a 1031 exchange because I started claiming it as a rental eventually, and I ended up buying a four-unit so essentially, uh, the 600K is once you factor in all the cash flow that I received over the years, because I went from making $200 positive cash flow on that property with an FHA loan. Uh, I did an analysis, I don't know if you've ever done this, called the return on equity. Mm -hmm. So there's return on investment, and then there's return on equity. So return on investment is, okay, I invested $8,000. I'm making $2,000, $200 a month. Right. Great return, 24% or something like that. Return on equity is the property appreciated. Appreciated. Now there's a hundred thousand dollars in equity. Mm. Now I do the math: two hundred dollars a month times a hundred, or divided by a hundred thousand in equity. It's like a two percent return. Yeah. So, so the calculation is basically: could you take your money, put it somewhere else, and could it earn you a better return? Right. So I took those a hundred thousand dollars and I bought a fourplex instead, and those two hundred dollars turned into two thousand dollars a month which now turned into $24,000 in a year. So once you factor everything, it, it, I, I, it adds up to about 600,000 and, I got and it. basically yeah. uh, profit principal pay down and yeah. everything like that. I've always thought about that just as like opportunity cost, right? Yeah. Cause it's like, yeah, I could sell this house right now. And you know, I got a couple hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. What could I do with that? So that's a good way to look at it. I, di I didn't realize that's what it was called though. That, that was one of the best principles, the opportunity cost that I learned in econ. I know that yeah. you said you were an econ major. Yep. They talk about opportunity cost for your money, opportunity cost for your time as well too. So it's one of my favorite, favorite things that I ever learned in, in econ, aside from supply and demand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, econ, you know, I'm a big hater on college, even yeah. though, you know, I got a degree and I loved my time in college, actually. Like I had a blast playing baseball and all uh -huh. that. But I just think it's such a scam, like yeah. for what it is today, ten years later, mm -hmm. which is also a crazy thing. That's been ten years since I was in school. But anyways, um, yeah, it's like people don't hire jobs based on it anymore. Like it's just it's so costly. It's just I, I wouldn't crazy. go back. In, in case you're wondering, I yeah. would not go back. Uh, I have a colleague who's got a master's. I would not go back and get a master's. I would not go back and get a doctor. And the reason is that. I can get a master from Ryan Pineda, Pineda <laughs> by uh, being on his uh, 
uh, by, by being spending a, a day, spending a day with Ryan, I can get a, a, a no, master's degree. No, uh, you know, homework required. Yeah. No, uh, papers or test. Exactly. <laughs> I can, I can get access to the best information a lot faster and get more straight to the point. So I, I would not go well, back. And the thing is information is changing so fast. Mm-hmm. You know, the world is like moving quick. And so what I learned in college 10 years ago, like, yeah, the basics of economics will never mm-hmm. change. Supply and demand, opportunity costs, that will never change. But I, I actually had this debate with um, someone I know who has a marketing degree. Mm-hmm. I'm like, do you really think your marketing <laughs> degree from 10 years ago is relevant today? Like, there's no way. I am a, I know way more about marketing than you do. Yeah. I don't need a degree because, like, I know. It's just, like, every day it's evolving. Not only that, the people that are working with you are getting master's degrees in marketing because they're watching what you're doing. So right. instead of maybe getting that marketing degree, working for somebody go work, like you. Go work for me, work for yeah. Gary Vee, go work for whoever's a top marketer. If you yeah. Want to, yeah, don't get a degree. <laughs> you're going to get a lot more experience doing that than basically getting a, well, a degree. Well, and, and think about this too. Me as an employer, would I rather go hire the guy with the marketing degree from Northridge or whatever, or the guy who worked for Gary V for three years? 100% Gary V. Yeah. <laughs> as, a, as a business owner as well too. 100%. Yeah, it's not even close. No question about it. So I think that's the new form of degrees like that. You know, who, who did you work for? Cause yeah. he, like even Google now, Google has their own um, like college essentially, mm-hmm. like where they'll teach you how to code, do all this stuff. Like you don't need a college degree. They're fine with you not doing it. Mm-hmm. So I think the world's just going that way. And I think, you know, you when you when you get a degree, I don't know where they derive the value from, but they're they're basically saying like, hey, a part of this tuition's to pay for the, you know, the actual learning that you the the things you learn. The other half is to pay for the proof that you learned it, the degree. Yeah. <laughs> and just to say, I have a degree from X. And I think that part of it is becoming more and more, you know, less valuable. Yeah. I think the only reason it was valuable for me was the fact that I actually got the implementation portion of it, which I think is the part that most people don't actually get. Um, That was the part that made it all worth it for me because I actually got, then my father gave me the liberty to to implement everything that I learned, which was a blessing. Right. Yeah. The thing that I I enjoyed about college, obviously it was baseball. (laughs) You know, I was just going to play sports, but what I did learn that was really great was living on my own, you know, growing up, just like you said, you're, you're kind of a knucklehead in Mm -hmm. in high school and then you grew up in college and, you know, I, I, I wasn't a knucklehead, but I definitely grew up way more. And I was, I had to, I'm like, man, I got to make my own food, wash my own clothes. I'm like living in a place I've never lived, got roommates and apartment, like, I got a schedule now. I got to yeah. be at school all these hours, then go practice. And it was a lot. Mm-hmm. Like college was literally harder than anything I've ever done. It was harder than pro baseball. It was harder than me filming this podcast right now. Like it was the, it was, I would say it was the hardest thing I've ever done. The college part. College. Like just everything. Being a college athlete was the hardest thing I've ever done. I think the, the one of the things as well, too, because I, I know a couple of people that have dropped out of college, um, but their expectation is that things are going to be easier. If somebody is in college, sometimes it's it, like I have a, um, a brother-in-law and uh, he, dro- he dropped out of college. And part of me wanted to tell him, hey, look, stay in there just to prove your commit, like to basically be able to finish off something instead of quitting on things, you know? Um, but, uh, yeah, it's not for everybody essentially. Yeah, Yeah. no, for sure. So if somebody were to, you know, want to become a realtor like yourself, Mm -hmm. um, you know, we get a lot of young, young guys and watching this young girls, um, what would you say to them? Like, obviously you're saying, don't go to college. Like, what would your first step be? I would say get, get the right mentor. Obviously you got to get your license first, but um, mentorship in my life has probably played the biggest role. Everything from the guy that taught me how to sell 30 homes to the guy that taught me how to make a million dollars a year selling real estate in a very efficient way, meaning like not running around like a chicken with <laughs> your head cut off showing properties all day. So he, he taught me how to do it really efficiently. So I'd probably say um, just getting the right mentor. And also like, I mean... <laughs> There's a guy, I'm not going to mention any names, but there's a guy that uh, 
um, has a big following in, in regards to real estate. But there are people out there who This have, guy's named Ryan Pineda. <laughs> no. I'm not going to see. He's a douche. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But but essentially, there are a lot of people who will tell you, yeah, I'll teach you how to make a million dollars a year selling real estate, but they've never done it. Right. And essentially what they're talking about, a lot of it is theory, meaning that like, oh, I heard this here that this works or that works. And sometimes theory is different than than actuality. So I would just say, and you can verify people so easily now, meaning Google their name, look up their Zillow track record, see how many properties they're actually selling. Uh, so sometimes agents are like, yeah, I sell 50, 100 homes a year. And uh, you look them up on Zillow and it says three sales in their <laughs> last 12 months or 10 sales in their entire career. So it, it, it doesn't mean that he can't teach you something. It just means that you you have to be careful as to where you're getting the information from because the wrong information will also make you really frustrated and will basically hurt you more than help you, essentially. So I'd say getting the right mentor would probably be the and, right. And mentor. essentially fact-checking your mentor as well, yeah. you know, because there's a lot of big talkers. Mm -hmm. You know, there are people who talk a really big game and, you know, when it comes push to shove and you look them up and you're like, none of this adds up. If that throws up red flags, you should be looking elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. Essentially, you have to be really careful who you get advice from, because there are a lot of people that will give you free advice, but sometimes it's it's worth what it costs. Nothing. <laughs> well, know? it's worth way, la it, way it, less. It yeah. pushes you further down the line <laughs> instead of helping you. Right. Yeah. So knowing all that, I mean, I I think that's great advice. I I think. <laughs> Almost every person we've had on the podcast, whenever I ask a similar type question, has given that exact same answer. Really? Yeah, because we all just understand that it's so hard to figure things out on your own. Mm -hmm. It's just you're winging it, just hoping for the best. And man, uh, you can definitely fail your way to success just winging it. No doubt yeah. about it. But why? Why? <laughs> why go through that, you know? Yeah, for sure. So... Tell me about just, you know, the next step for you, man. I mean, you've got all this success as a realtor. You've got 56 doors. You've got, you know, the social media you're starting up. Like, what's like the big picture behind it all? Like, what's going to motivate you to do all this? Because I'll tell you for me, I've interviewed a lot of people and uh, myself included. Like, people always ask, like, how do you keep going? Like, what, mo like, you've had enough success. What motivates you at this point? I'd say family, man. My, I, I have a two-year-old uh, named Jose Luis Morales the third. There we go. Did it after my dad because my dad's Jose Luis Morales. So I wanted to kind of say thank you to him for obviously everything that he taught me as a kid. Um, my wife is expecting. So we're expecting our second boy, Diego Morales, coming September 2021. Nice, man. That's <laughs> but exciting. I, I'd say freedom is really the, the, the end goal to all this. Like having – freedom where essentially um i'm not having to I, I having choices like meaning i don't have to go in and sell a property today um so i'm a lot more focused on residual um i'm a lot more focused on purpose and i'm a lot more focused on getting freedom to the point where um my income is not tied to an act a, a very specific act activity so um yeah freedom is probably the thing that i'm focused on so i'm looking to grow my residual to the point where it co covers uh a point where i can basically retire today and not have to worry about anything if i wanted to that doesn't mean that i'm going to do it but it's a good place to to be at basically where you can say i don't have to do this or i don't have to do that basically right. yeah yeah i love that and i think when i think about freedom me personally and just interviewing other guests mm -hmm. as well, it's like there's two ways. I mean, there's the financial freedom, which mm -hmm. is um, kind of the generic answer that uh, we all understand, right? Mm -hmm. As long as I can have more passive income coming in than my expenses, like yeah. I'm good, baby. And rental properties are great. Businesses are great. Mm -hmm. It's kind of what you're alluding to is like, you know, I want these things to make me money while I sleep. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think the other one to think about, which you're also cautious of or cognizant of mm -hmm. is uh time freedom. I right. Agree. And so, yes, it, it's, 
any high income earner will tell you this. Like it's great making a lot of money, but if you could make a lot of money in very little time, that's like the dream. And if you can build a business that mm -hmm. makes money while you sleep, if you can buy rentals, if you can um, build up a team that does yeah. the things you used to do, but you know, now you're not making as much, but you have all this new time freedom, you know, it's so valuable. There's only so many things you can buy with money, man. And and I think that's the part that I meant to to say that that's that's what motivates me the 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 time freedom right. that's really what I'm motivated by now, which obviously has become a lot more important because of the family now you know right like my sons and how how has how has the family changed your your mindset um I a lot more focused on efficiency and just uh, time just time basically um. I, obviously, I want to be as productive and efficient as I possibly can, um, and I want to be able to have um, just. Uh, it basically made me make a lot more money in basically less time, basically. And now I, I felt like when my wife told me she was pregnant with the second one, I went into another gear again. It yeah. was like when she told me she was pregnant with the first one, it was a big step up in my game. Now she, when she told me, "Hey, look, I'm pregnant again." It's another step up in the game because now I'm thinking like, all right, so I have I have basically a, a three year vision where in three years um, I will have more residual income than most people make uh, as a couple. Like basically the, the, the goal is to have close to a million dollars in residual positive income. That's the goal in in uh, three years in three years, basically. Right. I love it. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, no, it's a great goal. Um, obviously, I'm I'm big on setting big goals. Mm -hmm. um, I could I could definitely live off a million a year. I think I wouldn't have an issue with that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think it's it's great for me. It's just like you said, it's always about the time freedom for me, man. Yeah. I just hate doing things that lock up my time, mm -hmm. and I only want to do things I enjoy. Yeah, so. I love where your mind's at, dude. Um, you know, as we wrap this up, uh, what are what are the best places to uh, find you on social? So I, I'd probably say inst Instagram. Yeah. Um, it's Jose Luis Morales. The only thing is that Luis is with a Z, not an S. Yeah. My dad didn't write it correctly on the birth certificate. <laughs> and now I actually enjoy it because um, there's so many... Luis is with an S. Yeah. Uh, my son's with a Z as well, too, by the way. Yeah. Um, and then if you guys want to check out our YouTube channel, um, Jose Luis Morales as well, too, with a Z. And then Dash Real Estate Education, I'd probably say. Um, Facebook, um, probably not the best way. I've reached the friend limit <laughs> on there. But Instagram would probably be the best the best way. And then TikTok. Uh, we're going to get on it. So that's going to be the, the goal. I love it, man. So, yeah, we'll definitely link to all those below. Um yeah, I, I've had a great interview, dude. Uh, it's been really awesome meeting with you. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm hyped that you came by today. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I've really enjoyed our time together, man. I'm excited to see uh, where social takes you. Yeah, and yeah. I'm excited to watch that three-year vision play out, man. I'll be rooting for you. Yeah, same thing, man. I'm very appreciative for, obviously, everything that you've done for us today. Obviously, it's one thing watching it on YouTube. It's another thing being on here. So I'm extremely appreciative and just keep doing what you're doing, man. You're inspiring a lot of young people. You're helping a lot of people. So appreciate uh, that. Best blessings and best wishes to you as cool, always. Man. I love it. Well, guys, we appreciate you guys for watching this video. Make sure you're subscribed on both YouTube and Apple Podcast. Until next time, take care. Peace. Thanks for watching the Ryan Pineda Show. If you want to work with me, head over to ryanpineda.com. You can find my courses, coaching programs, and upcoming events. We also have free resources you can download, so head over to ryanpineda.com.